It's an only mode. Good morning. This is Fred Emery with Heartland, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this webinar, TouchNet Plus One Card, Moving Campus Commerce Forward. This webinar will be in listen-only mode. If you would like to ask any questions, please move to the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel and simply type in your questions. I will try to answer them throughout the presentation. However, I will allow time at the end uh, to answer any questions that you all may have. Additionally, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted on our website, www.onecard.com, as well as on YouTube. That's the number one card.com. So today in the Touch, TouchNet Plus One Card webinar, we're going to go over a little bit of, more about Heartland, who, who really is Heartland. We'll discuss this concept of the unified campus commerce, talk a little bit about TouchNet and how they provide a unified campus commerce, one card as a standard payment type. Elevating the one card to a standard throughout your campus for making payments. And also discuss securely accepting payments. We'll talk a little bit about the touch net difference and how one card plays into the entire unified campus commerce ecosystem and that concept, as well as development that's ongoing between one card and the touch net system. Again, if you'd like to ask any questions, just go to the questions area of the GoToWebinar control panel and feel free to type them in. So let's get started. A little bit about Heartland. Heartland is the fifth largest payment processor in North America. Our core business is card transactions. What we do as a company is we enable colleges, universities, retail merchants, restaurants, to accept cards as a form of payment. So your standard Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover, debit cards and credit cards at those locations. We are endorsed by more than 250 plus associations. We work with more than 300,000 merchants and more than 3,000 colleges or universities. In 2014, as an example, we processed more than 3.3 billion transactions. $122 billion in volume that comes to. I bring this up because our core business is transaction processing and one card is a tool used by colleges and universities to allow transactions to process on campus in addition to credit and debit cards. So our core business is processing those cards and we bring that to you within our one card system. So let's talk a little bit about some changes that have been within the campus area of Heartland and how we've grown and a little bit more about TouchNet and how it plays into our overall strategy and our overall, overall product offering. Now, uh, several years ago, Heartland launched uh, the one card product through an acquisition of a company called General Meters and additionally had acquired a company called ECSI. Um, a little more than a year ago, Heartland acquired TouchNet. What this allows us to do is to provide solutions for campuses for permissions. So uh, can you get into a concert or an event on campus for payments, dining transactions, vending transactions with the one card as well as credit and uh, debit cards to automate processes and allow the campus to run more efficiently. So basically what we do is we combine these product sets under Heartland Campus Solutions to allow campuses to work better together through all these different areas. Now TouchNet is a solution that allows a campus to manage their commerce throughout the campus. What we often see is that you have auxiliary services, business office, and various other locations on campus that are accepting payments, various types of payments, uh, credit, debit card for uh, payment of tuition, development, uh, events and services. And all of this is, is 
might be from a single payment processor, from multiple pay payment processors. Maybe some of those transactions are one card relater related, but they're separated throughout campus. So what TouchNet is able to do and the Heartland campus umbrella is pull this all together. And under Heartland campus systems, Heartland campus solutions and all of our systems allow them to function efficiently and have frictionless transactions, automate those services and allow it all to be managed centrally and uh, easily throughout your campus. What we're going to do, though, is talk a little bit more today about OneCard and how it fits into that unified campus commerce ecosystem. We'll explore how you can create that unified campus commerce platform that includes OneCard to provide automation, efficiency, and frictionless transactions. Now, when we look at the OneCard, we must really think big picture. Where can the card be used? What can it do? And how does it fit into that overall scheme of payments on campus, that complete campus commerce platform? How can it maximize revenue as well as enhance experiences for the students? What's that big picture and how does the one card fit into it? Additionally, we need to look at other payment types on campus, how one card fits in alongside those as part of that unified campus commerce platform. What other payment types are desired on campus? And what is the overall scope of payments on a co collegiate campus? Now, what we found is with studies that, that students live their lives through their mobile devices. And by 2016, close to 90% of college students in the US will own a smartphone. They're very mobile enabled. Uh, their desire is to utilize their mobile devices for transactions. So as that relates to the one card, it's really time to rethink the campus card and view it more as a mobile credential and how that will fit into your overall payment strategy on campus and how mobile fits into that commerce ecosystem that you will be creating on your campus with TouchNet being a central core product of that, including the one card. We've also seen an increase in debit card use on campus with um, more than 542 million cards in circulation. Uh, that keeps on increasing. We're seeing debit being used as a standard payment type in retail locations, but also on collegiate campuses. Uh, the use of debit cards have increased over the last year, over the last few years. Uh, 77% of consumers report having a de debit card, while 67% use it for at least one transaction monthly. These are close to the ones, uh, to, to numbers for credit cards as well, with 82% of consumers have reported having a credit card and 81% using it at least once a month. So um, we see, obviously, credit and debit card being used as a standard payment type. and individuals wanting to continue to use those throughout campus to make payments. So what's the student expectation as they look at mobile, the one card, and standard payment types of credit and debit? Well, the expectation is that they can use anything that's in their wallet or in their hand. Uh, Apple Pay, Google Wallet, their are standard debit or credit ca cards, PayPal, as well as their student ID to make payments. As we look also what parents expect when they send their students off to college, they are also looking for ease of use, having a little bit of control over the expenditure of funds, which would allow them to utilize those standard payment types as well, credit and debit card, Apple Pay, Google Wallet, those mobile devices, as well as their student ID to meet the needs that they have. Having the ability to limit funds strictly for dining or for the bookstore, uh, so they're not going and um, buying sweatshirts at the Gap or um, beer at a, a local tavern when they need to buy books or have food to eat. 
having that control over the expenditures and where the money can be deposited into. So really what this comes down to is a unified campus commerce platform where all payment types are accepted at every terminal. That would include those mobile, the one card, and standard transaction types, the debit and credit cards that students will have in their wallet. Looking at where the campus card generally is accepted, we quite often see it in use in laundry, parking, for print management, dining, bookstore, various other financial transactions, vending, used to pay for events, as well as the privilege control and permissions based, even in the ID office to pay for a lost card or pay for different services in the ID office. When we look at where credit and debit cards are accepted, there seems to be some overlap where dining in the bookstore uh, accept credit and debit, some various other financial transactions, but you'll also see credit and debit used in housing for housing fees and deposits for conferences and conference services, as well as tuition payment. So that unified campus commerce ecosystem would combine all of those functions together on campus and allow either your debit or credit card to be accepted, your mobile to be accepted, as well as your one card to be accepted in all of those locations. So it's a standardized payment throughout campus, accepting any type of transaction, any type of payment type at any type of terminal that you have. So you may be wondering how we get there. Well, first off, expanding the campus card acceptance so the one card becomes a standard, securely, securely enabling the acceptance of bank cards, those credit and debit cards, as well as managing that unified commerce ecosystem. And the third part is really where TouchNet comes in and will work al alongside the one card. And we'll get to that a little more in just a, a little bit. Once we take these three pieces, the this three-pronged approach, we really can create that unified campus commerce ecosystem on your on your campus. So let's start with expanding campus card acceptance. As we look at the one card as a single point of access to campus life, what we need to do is turn that campus card into a standard payment type, where the one card is accepted anywhere that a student would like to make a purchase, as shown in that diagram. How do we do this? How do we get to that part, that point? Well, what we do is we look at the vision on the campus, what the budget is like, and what's the priority? What do you need to accomplish first? If let's say you are using your card in dining and the bookstore, well, let's look at now adding acceptance in vending and print management and laundry to pay for library fees or even paying for tuition fees. Utilizing that card, the campus card, the one card, that ID, to the fullest of its potential and having it accepted anywhere that a student would like to make a payment. Just let it be that standard that can be utilized alongside the other payment methods. So the way to expand out the use of the one card and make it really a standard is to assemble key stakeholders regularly, maybe once per month or semester, to go over the usage and where the card can be accepted and what the next steps are for expansion on campus, new areas that can be added to accept the one card. Some folks that could be part of this team would be faculty, staff, students, IT resources, facilities, dining, residential life, student life, academic affairs, parking, bookstore personnel, and business office personnel. So just a few recommendations on who should be included in these meetings. Bring them in as part of the process and allow them to contribute to where the one card can be expanded and where it can be utilized on campus. Have them on board supporting the vision of the campus card office and the campus card as a standard payment type. Once you have those folks on board and you uh, plan the budget to utilize the card in those area, purchase terminals or integrate to various systems, it's basically moving to the implementation phase, working with Heartland to 
enable those areas to accept the one card through various terminals and integrations. So let's look at securely accepting bank cards. As we saw earlier, students will want to utilize their Visa, MasterCard, their standard bank-issued card to also make payments in various locations on campus. So how do we securely accept bank cards and what really comes into play in accepting bank cards on your campus? Well, as the number of payment points increase and the desire to utilize the card in various locations increase, we need to keep in mind security and, and how we would utilize and manage that system, the reporting that comes in. Of course, security is a top priority, enabling the transactions to flow over the network to your processor in a secure fashion keeping track and keeping in line with uh, various regulations, PCI and PADSS, the Payment Card Industry and Payment Application Data Security Standards, making sure that your environment is secure and you are in line with the regulations that you need to, uh, to take to heart and making sure that you're processing transactions in line with those regulations. Of course, one concern of many campuses right now is um, getting ready for EMV. EMV is Europay MasterCard Visa. And basically what this is, is the chip that is now what you're probably seeing in many cards. Um, our friends to the north up in Canada and folks over in Europe have been taking chip cards for quite a while. And it um, provides a very secure transaction environment. Uh, we here in the U.S. have been doing more transactions with the magnetic stripe. Moving to the chip, which um, the card brands are, are promoting for October 2015 to really have folks accept EMV at their locations, um, will, will help you to process more securely on your campus. Um, and it also shifts liability for any fraudulent use away from the merchant to the card issuer. So we see many campuses concerned with needing to get ready and for um, EMV acceptance on their, on their campus. And this is one piece of securely accepting standard issued bank cards on your campus in addition to your one card. Uh, one of the reasons why or reasons why you would accept you'd want to have a secure environment is due to data breaches. Between 20, 2005 and 2013, there were 551 reported data breaches on college and university campuses. This is a pretty high number. Uh, it's, it's high because colleges have a lot of data on their students, personal information, not only transactional data that's running across campus for credit and debit cards and the one card system, but also personal information, social security numbers for financial aid, birth dates, names, addresses, which makes it a, a, a location that is, is ripe for um, the bad guys to try to steal data. So having a secure environment for your transactions is very important. Uh, Aleutian has done some studies and on average, it's about $4 million per data breach on a campus. Uh, there's an average of 27,509 records that are exposed per breach at an average of $142 per record. So it's very costly um, for a campus if a breach occurs. Now, having your campus and your transactions secured will alleviate a lot of that financial burden and minimize the possibility of a breach. It really helps you out. So one thing to consider, consider is, are your transactions secure? Now let's look at this video to show you a little bit about how you can secure your transactions with Heartland and how that can, um, Heartland Secure can help you along those lines.
You know, what you just saw it was about Heartland Secure, and, and really what it does is it provides a, a three-pronged approach to securing your transactions. Uh, one, using EMV, those chip-based cards. Uh, the second is end-to-end -end encryption, encrypting the card data that is sent from the card reader terminal to Heartland in terms of processing those transactions. And then the third is tokenization, where instead of having card data transmitted back to the terminal with the approval or the decline, the authorization, uh, a token is sent back. So no card data is passed back to the terminal. So you have that secure chip, the end-to-end -end encryption, as well as tokenization. Uh, if you're not using Heartland to process those transactions, there's some other providers that uh, do somewhat similar things, but um, Heartland provides this three-pronged approach as well as a, a breach warranty that will help you to maintain secure transactions. So I, I definitely recommend you look at Heartland for your credit and debit card processing needs and work with us to help you secure those transactions. Uh, with EMV, E3, and tokenization, it really is a, a win-win for everyone involved and allows you to have those secure transactions across your campus. Another way to help you secure those transactions is moving to an out-of-scope configuration on your point-of-sale devices. In the past, you've, you, or what you're most familiar with or most locations are familiar using is a traditional payment configuration that you see up here on top, where a payment terminal will send cardholder data to a point of sale system. That point of sale system is then processing that transaction to your processor, such as Heartland. Um, so the POS has the data and is sending it over. They have that cardholder data. data. Now with out of scope configuration, it moves that terminal after the point of sale system. So the point of sale system is ringing up the transaction and instead of getting the card data from the terminal, it's simply sending the amount of the transaction to the card reader, which then would process that transaction with the, uh, with the credit card processor, such as Heartland. That would enable you then to remove that terminal from your PADSS scope on campus, have it out of scope to communicate directly and not be on the same network as your point of sale terminal. You can do then your EMV, your um, encryption and tokenization, also accept uh, mobile payments as well as standard MagStripe transactions, but have that POS piece out of scope from the terminal that's processing the transaction to Harlan. So please look into this out of scope configuration for your campus and your uh, locations where you have point of sale terminals. It really can help you to provide a more secure environment for those transactions. So as we look at this unified campus commerce ecosystem where the one card is a standard payment type uh, and credit and debit cards are, are standard payment type throughout campus, all types of payments at all terminals, we can now secure those transactions and expand the one card system. Now let's look at the third piece of this, of this puzzle, the third prong, which is managing that unified commerce ecosystem. And this really is where TouchNet comes in. TouchNet will allow us to provide a true unified commerce ecosystem that you can manage efficiently, get all the data that you need, in a single area. Now TouchNet will tie all those payment locations into the business office and they've traditionally done this. However, the one card has always been separated. Now the goal is to bring that in as part of the complete picture, as part of that unified campus commerce ecosystem, that it's a standard payment type alongside debit and credit cards and it's flowing through or viewable through the managed solutions of TouchNet that, that are provided. Now, in the past, you probably had, if you were dealing with multiple processors, multiple statements and reports, your one card reports would be separate from your credit card reports, and you'd really have them uh, a number of areas that you need to look to try to figure out the overall picture and the visibility of the commerce that's going on on your campus and the transactions that are flowing on your campus in the different areas for payments. 
you've what traditionally has been is that the one card pictured here on the right in the gray circle was separated from the other payment types that were is pictured here on in the red circle. What we're able to do now with TouchNet and one card is combine those into a single platform so that you can have both credit and debit card transactions centralized for management where you can see that data in a centralized location. How do we do this? Well, through the products of TouchNet with integration by one card. We're able to use the massive integrations of the e-commerce products from TouchNet to pull in transactions from all different um, providers. You'll see here a number of different providers, um, bookstore solutions, housing solutions, Heartland One Card, various parking solutions, ERP solutions, all coming into a centralized product called e-commerce. This massive integration allows you to have complete visibility of the transactions on your campus, including one card and your different payment types. How this works is the merchant ID numbers from TouchNet, TouchNet payment application and devices, including the web, come to a centralized database as part of TouchNet, as well as non-TouchNet payments and the one card. They'll all come into a centralized database, which then allows you to view the transactions and see what's going on, have total visibility, and manage those transactions through a centralized dashboard. As you can see here, here's a view of the dashboard. You'll be able to see the different payment types. And in the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that highlighted in yellow are the one card transactions. So one card will be part of this complete visibility. You'll see the campus commerce, uh, from your various payment types, uh, Visa, MasterCard, Discover, American Express, all the different areas coming into a centralized area, as well as your one card. You'll have visibility into what was spent on the one card in your vending, in your dining, uh, for laundry. The different general ledger accounts that are part of one card will be within the centralized dashboard for your viewing, your reporting, and your management. An application called Recon One will tie it all together. The Heartland One Card transactions, the Heartland processing of your debit and MasterCard, debit and credit card transactions, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Discover, tie it all in with your ERP system and where those funds are going and the different transactions that came through the TouchNet payment gateway which allows the acceptance of those credit and debit cards throughout campus in, in all the different locations. It ties it all together into one reporting solution so you can see all that in uh, an easy fashion and have great visibility into the product set. Some of the things that we're doing with TouchNet, which will allow you to have um, better control of your one card, as well as see that complete campus commerce ecosystem, that unified campus commerce platform, is allowing one card to be accepted throughout the, the TouchNet marketplace and payment gateway. As you can see here, uh, it'll allow the deposit of funds to the one card, as well as the viewing of the account balance. So your students that are used to going into a centralized portal for payment of tuition to view the um, their balance that they may owe on tuition or housing or various fees can add funds and view the balance on their one card from that centralized location. They'll see their full e-bill statement and as well as what is available on their one card and can manage it accordingly in the centralized um, portal the Student Account Center. If you have needs to have any type of electronic agreement as part of your campus acceptance of funds or deposits, this can all be part of uh, the TouchNet solution as well for bill payment. Additionally, through the TouchNet solution, you'll be able to set up various payment options and an e-wallet. So, we're storing credit card data off-site to allow automatic um, 
payments for your tuition, for your housing fees, what have you, any type of payment that's needed, as well as upload up, updates and refreshes to your one card. Uh, you can set those transactions to occur automatically at certain points of times or with certain levels. So you can top up your card through the TouchNet solution with the, the various payment options that can be recorded, the payment methods that are recorded within the system. Additionally, uh, TouchNet offers a complete marketplace, which allows you to sell different types of services, has a storefront, and allows you to sell uh, parking plans and um, meal plans within a complete solution, both web and mobile enabled. So that will allow you to uh, pay for those with your one card, as well as standard credit and debit card, but also through their mobile applications, accept the one card as a form of payment uh, as needed. Here's an example, example of a customizable storefront that can be uh, branded for your campus where you can sell various items, um, have someone sign up for a golf tournament, purchase an event shirt or a golf towel or a, an alumni hat. This can help you increase your donations as well as your development funds as people uh, purchase these items. Additionally, you can of course do parking plans and various events that I manage right that I mentioned right through these customizable storefronts. Perhaps you have student organizations that need want to do sales or what have you. Um, having the ability to create a storefront for them, would be a, a benefit for your campus. As you pay for, for those items on those storefronts, you'll see here that you would get the re a receipt with the various information that's needed. And this example here shows that the one card was used as a, as a payment type. So this is allowing the one card to be a complete and total piece of that unified campus commerce platform, allowing it to integrate as part of the TouchNet solution as a payment type and allowing you to additionally manage accounts and make deposits to your one card through the TouchNet uh, e-commerce solution. So just to recap what we've done with TouchNet and how one card fits in, into the TouchNet solution, it can be a standard payment type in the marketplace and as part of the payment gateway. So anywhere that you're um, credit and debit cards would be accepted on campus through the TouchNet solution. One card can also be a payment type. You'll be able to deposit funds to the one card through the TouchNet solution, show the one card balance, purchase meal plans, event services, parking plans, all through the marketplace. But what this will also do is add those one card functions accordingly within the one card system. So if you purchased an event through the marketplace, it would do the assignment for the, for the rules within one card to allow the card to be accepted at a one card terminal to verify your permission to that event or service. Uh, the same with parking plans, purchase a parking plan, and then it gets assigned to an individual that then they could um, utilize their card to open up a parking gate or enter a certain parking lot uh, accordingly that they have access to. We'll have that complete TouchNet dashboard integration so that you'll be able to have visibility into the general ledger accounts uh, right from a centralized dashboard alongside your credit and debit cards. You'll be able to see the one card transactions that are used throughout campus for financial. So the vending machines, the laundry, the bookstore expenditures on the one card, all will be within that um, dashboard so you have complete visibility as a business operation on your campus. This removes the friction from those transactions and creates a more efficient and automated operation on your, on your campus. Additionally, we can work with TouchNet for ERP data integration as TouchNet is tied into many of the ERP systems uh, say Banner, PeopleSoft, we can then exchange student data through TouchNet to those locations. Now we're bringing these functions to our campuses and our campus clients, so please feel free to uh, contact us to see how they can fit into um, your campus and how TouchNet and OneCard can form that complete ecosystem for you. Because really when we look at it, 
when we expand the campus card acceptance as a standard payment type, securely allow the acceptance of bank cards throughout campus as students are really pushing for and asking for, and then provide that management tool to manage the unified commerce ecosystem on campus, including the one card, we provide that complete and total unified campus commerce platform. It'll allow you on your campus then to accept all the different payment types that your students would like. You know, cash and check, credit cards, debit cards, the one card and mobile payments throughout campus. So any payment type at every terminal, all payment types at every terminal. Looking back to that big picture, what this will allow you to do is really enhance the visibility of the one card system, enhance the acceptance of it, which will help you to maximize revenue as well as enhance that student experience. At the end of the day, you're making your students happier and you're also increasing revenue for the campus. So I hope you enjoyed this webinar and got a lot of information from it. Uh, feel free to ask any questions that you may have. I'm not seeing any uh, come in now into the um, GoToWebinar control panel, but feel free to type in any questions that you may have. If you have any questions that pop up later on, my email address is shown on the screen right now, as well as our website and the our phone number. You can feel free to review this webinar again in, um, in the next couple of weeks. It should be loaded to our website within a week's time. The question did come in, is the integration fully functional at this time? Uh, parts of it have been completed in development, but there is ongoing development at, at this time on, on all of these pieces. So it's not completely integrated at this time and fully functional. That is in the works and uh, we will be updating our clients accordingly as um, the different pieces come out. Uh, but this gives you some idea of what is coming and what the overall picture will be. Uh, so you can start investigating adding TouchNet to your campus or planning with your different business team members how one card and TouchNet can work together to really get that plan in motion on your campus. One of the pieces that are that is in process is uh, the banner integration, and that is something that is is in process now. We do have some other tools, though. If any campuses want to integrate with Banner, there are some other tools um, in place. We did a webinar a couple of weeks ago on a company called Swift Data that is available for Banner integration now as needed, as well as uh, standard web service to web service integration. Uh, there is a webinar that is on our website regarding the Swift Data integration, so feel free to take a look at that one as well. Uh, where there are multiple ways which we'll be able to integrate through sy to systems, uh, one being with TouchNet, another through Swift Data, and then our, our standard integration tools. If there's no other questions, um, or if there are any other questions, please feel free to uh, email me them or give me a call. Um, I'd be happy to answer them. I'm not seeing any other questions come in, so I'm going to thank you for your time today. I appreciate you joining me on this webinar, and I hope to see you on some future webinars as well. Thank you, and have a great day.